Please give it up for Francois Dumont. He's a chief operations officer and co-founder of Golf Fix. And he's got something interesting for you. Hello, hello. Yes, it does work. The floor is yours, Fix. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Francois Dumont. I'm a co-founder and COO of Goldfinex. Uh, when we were asked to come to the conference and uh, talk about how new technology can impact positively the financial world, we jumped on the uh, occasion to discuss and present our business case. Goldfinex is a uh, fintech company that created a new way of funding uh, uh, new companies linked to the gold mining. It's a uh, fair trade by definition that just happened to be a profitable uh, venture. The problem that we are so passionate to solve is the inability of the artisanal, small-scale miners to obtain funding or financing. This is what we call the Great Divide. The two worlds of the miners in the jungle and the boardrooms of traditional finance institution have never seen eye to eye, to say the least, and to best of our information and knowledge, it's never going to happen. Uh, very large organizations, the World Bank, the IMF and large NGOs have spent uh, a lot of money trying to determine what is the cause of this uh, horrific condition that is associated to small-scale gold minings around the world. And we will see the impact uh, in a couple of slides uh, further. But they all came to the same conclusion. At the center of this horrific con condition is their inability to get funding, to get finance, to get access to capital. If you're a large uh, industrial mining organization and you need a billion dollar, banks will be at your feet to loan you the money. But if you are a segment of the 40 million, that's four zero, 40 million of artisanal gold miners around the world, obtaining finance or access to capital is impossible. This is one of the consequences of that. This is where we need to press on the button. All right, so this is a uh, reflection. This is not every day situation, but the working condition of this horrific condition is every day's reality. The safety is definitely not uh, up to standards when it comes to uh, mining operation. This is illegal operations going on around the world in more than 75 countries. That particular day, they lost a, a woman, uh, a mother, and then a young teenage, uh, teenage boy. So there are uh, consequences to this status quo. If you don't do anything today, uh, miners are still going to remain illegal and operating informally in the jungle, remote areas, very often uh, jungle conditions. Uh, one of the major consequences of their inability to have access to proper fund is the usage of very cheap and readily available technique, technology, or lack of technology and products, which is basically centered in most cases around the usage of mercury and cyanide. Now, 
mercury and cyanide need us to say this is not the type of material that you put in your teeth in the morning, right? Very toxic, not very good for, the, for your health. Mercury, as an example, one of the main reasons why we're not supposed to be eating so much fish in our diet, it's because of the mercury accumulation. And that mercury comes predominantly from the gold extraction operations. Now picture this, the gold operation is done in the jungle, yet the fish lives in the ocean. So imagine the trail of devastation on the environment all the way through. So this is one example on how uh, proper funding could address this, uh, this situation. Uh, the usage of chemical is only one consequence of the inability for them to obtain proper uh, financing or capital. There's extreme violence. Because they're operating illegally, they don't have a legal claim to the mineral rights to their territory. These guys cannot leave on Friday night and uh, expect a, a quiet weekend with the, the family uh, and then coming back on Monday and the territory would still be untouched, right? Uh, legal dispute is rarely done in front of uh, attorneys. It's more um, calling in the Kalishnikov cousins and solve or resolve uh, in a very uh, brutal way. So imagine raising families and kids in that type of environment. It creates you know, all sorts of impact on the community and on the human uh, basis. So what we're trying to do is basically the, the impact of our solution is literally bringing them from, you know, not stone age, but very close to this, from their current way of manually uh, extracting the gold and not having access to profitable market to sell their product. They're selling in the jungle at a deprived price. It's just horrible. They even spend the money, the, the, the way that they buy the mercury and the diesel for the pumps is always with a, a pinch of dust of gold. So imagine the price of their diesel liter that they're paying in the jungle. So what we're trying to do is, like I've said, is to bring them away from that type of environment and into a more, you know, paradise-like type of environment. We're still talking about mi gold mining, but if we're able to provide them with the proper fundings, then we provide them the ability to make intelligent and more educated decisions of which the usage of technology. If you, if you have the proper machinery and technology, there's no reasons for you to use mercury and cyanide anymore. So this is a direct impact of our ability to break the status quo. So how do we create this new way of funding that basically was rendered possible today because of new technology? Right, blockchain is an example and obviously cryptocurrency. So essentially what we've done is we've created our, our, our own cryptocurrency called uh, the GIX. We're selling the GIX, raising money, allocating that money to those gold miners after proper due diligence, verifications of the reserve, making sure they're able to uh, operate a business. We coach them in that uh, operations. We bring expert to optimize uh, all of those operations. We are actually not giving them the money, but we're providing this money in a fair trade way. And this, this is essentially, let's say we establish that they need $3 million to operate their business plan. This $3 million is given to them against an advanced purchase agreement. So we're buying gold for $3 million in advance, but we're paying in advance. They use this money to buy the machinery that we basically buy for them, negotiate, have the logistic arrange, we provide the training and the coaching. But at one point, they are starting to extract gold from the ground. So at that point, there's two things that's gonna happen. The first thing is they need to deliver the amount that we've advanced purchase. Once that is delivered, from that point on, we will be getting as a reward for providing them access to capitals that they wouldn't be able to have access. From that point on, they will give us 20% of their production share for the lifetime of the mine, for all of the mines that we're helping. 
One very particular aspect to this is 100% of the gold that is delivered, which is associated to the amount that we advanced pay, 100% of that gold is stored permanently in a vault in Switzerland. This serves essentially to protect our cryptocurrency. This is why we call this the protected coin. Once they've delivered what we paid in advance and then the royalty start, 75% of what we receive as royalty is also stored permanently into the vault. So every month inside that vault, you will see an increasing amount of gold that serves as a protection to the gigs. Now, there's also a condition to increase the protection or solidify the protection, which is a legal link, which is basically a condition that should the gigs, our cryptocurrency, be prevented to continue to exist for any reasons in the future, there's a condition in the smart contract that trigger the liquidation of the vault, of the gold in the vault, and then the money from the sale of the gold is distributed amongst all of the gigs uh, owners. That solidifies the, the protection. Now, imagine also that you're seeing every month the gold accumulating in the reserve, audited by one of the big audit uh, firms worldwide. So you're actually able to predict that some growing with time. This is a business model that will be operational still 15 years from now. All of the executives have signed in for at least 10 years to participate into this problem solving that we're so passionate uh, about. So you're actually able to, not with precision, but at least you have a tools to predict the evolution of the price of the gigs. And this is where the investor makes its money in the ability to buy today at the introductory price and then selling it in time with multiple of returns possibly. So this is this unique method that we've came uh, uh, together and basically we will be able to finance our first mine because we've started to raise money through the sales of, the, of our crypto uh, probably mid-summer this year and then we will see gold accumulating in the reserve probably early in September, October of this year. Uh, other example of how technology can bring additional benefit to the gold mining uh, community. One of the first one is we will have what we call a true origination supply chain management system that's going to ultimately certify and guarantee the origin of the goal. Some of the goal is produce uh, very illegally and funds very bad people in certain countries on certain continents. And it's getting very difficult for this gold to come to the refinery where it's basically valued, where it's refined and purified and then only at that time that it's associated with a value. We are basically building this supply chain management that will offer that certification, which ultimately will provide the highest return when you sell the gold for the miners. The second point that is important is that this GIX will also going to be used as a microcurrency in the small scale artisanal gold mining environment. This will basically allow the owner of the mine to pay salary using our uh, microcurrency, the GIX, and also shared with the spouse, a secondary card of the wallet allow this person to go to ATM that we will also install in the, uh, the village and convert to the local currency to buy the produce and whatever is being required. It will also create the possibility to, instead of paying with gold dust in the, in the jungle, the ability to pay suppliers. And hopefully this will grow into having more and more merchant being able. So never, you know, a currency that's going to replace the national uh, paper currency, but certainly very conducive for the uh, micro, uh, for the small go uh, gold miners uh, around the world in that industry. And all of this effort that we're doing, including the advent of the technology, comes directly to what they call the Minamata Convention, which is a UN initiative that something needs to be done on this. 
there's a missed opportunity when it comes to the economic development of 40 million people working every day, but illegally and unreported. This, the major problem for countries, the World Bank, you know, the large NGOs is the uh, absence of payment of royalty. Every country that has mineral as an extraction industry uh, allows people to come and extract in exchange for a single digit payment of royalty. But none of that is done when their operations are illegal. So by providing them again with the proper funding, the education and the formalization of that industry, they will have this way, this possibility of paying directly the, the royalty, the government locally mostly, will be able to benefit from those tax and then eventually return the building of you know clinics, hospitals, schools, roads, that's gonna ultimately benefit and better the community of that uh, industry. Uh, just an example, those are locations that we have received uh, prospect mines. We will be uh, making a selection of the best of the best once we're starting to uh, fund or finance those mines sometime uh, early summer. Uh, but basically, there's gold extraction in 75 countries. There's about 37 mines represented here. Basically, to show you, it's going to be literally worldwide on every continent except for the poles. But there's big nodes, uh, Canada, not because I'm originally from Canada, but Canada is rich, but there's also an ecosystem over there that is uh, in need of uh, financing. There's obviously the Central and South America, Africa, which is a big uh, gold producer, but also Asia, from Australia to China, with a uh, big presence in uh, Indonesia and the Philippines. So all of this, hopefully, will lead us to you know, a better world for the gold miners, uh, their community, the countries, for the taxations and their ability to uh, benefit in the long run. Uh, but this will have severe impact, not only with maybe our ability for our kids to eat a little bit more fish eventually because of the mercury um, uh, problem that we could help uh, solve, but ultimately, uh, all the favorable and positive impact that a simple fix, such as providing them funding or financing, and considering that today technology allows us to do that, to be able to finance these guys. So this concludes our, uh, our presentation. Uh, you know, we are doing our part. You can too. Uh, we're in the booth D11 here. We'll be more than happy if you guys can come and visit. We'll explain and tell you how to you know contribute in this uh, in this operations thank you very much you've been very helpful <laughs>